Hey, what's up? It's your girl Sheeta Davis, Really Nourish. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video, but I am now starting a series about food sovereignty, specifically here in Trinidad and Tobago. And my first act in raising awareness of the need, the urgent need to really think about food sovereignty for this country is to look at import dependency. And so I am going to go 30 days without eating anything made from wheat. Let's talk about that some more. So let me give you an idea of why I'm doing this. 70% of all of what we eat in this country is imported. If we lost access to even half of that, it would mean food shortages nationwide and people would be real hangry. With a population of 1.4 million, we're importing 220 pounds of wheat per person per year. Now, if you exclude babies and small children who wouldn't eat as much wheat as an adult, we're talking about 300 pounds of wheat per year for some adults. Like, how much roti is that? And then finally, the US is our biggest trading partner. Let's talk a little bit about food sovereignty. The concept was developed and the phrase was coined by Via Campesina and brought to public debate during the World Food Summit in 1996. It is the people's countries or state unions right to defend their agricultural and food policy without any dumping vis-a-vis -vis third country. But I do know that the United States Department of Agriculture's subsidy program is quite broken and wheat, soy, corn, and a few other a handful of other crops get over subsidized now what that does is it creates surpluses low-cost surpluses so what it instead of curtailing those surpluses by changing the subsidy policy the United States Department of Agriculture then seeks markets outside the United States for those crops so-called developing nations become the recipient markets for those crops. Either they are flooded with those commodities at very low prices or they're just dumped as aid. It sounds at first blush like the United States is giving people an opportunity to get free or low cost food, but what really ends up happening is a certain dependency starts to form and local farmers can't sell what they grow to their own people. So now those people are nourished from outside the country and that starts to create a situation where the exporting country has some control over the importing country. And make no mistake, the United States definitely uses that control as a tool to get what it wants. When it So I need to qualify all this by just saying that wheat is healthy. It's herb yielding seed, okay? God gave it to us in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 11. It is herb yielding seed. He gave it to us in verse 29 to nourish ourselves. He called it our meat, if you read the King James. It contains several vitamins and minerals including selenium, manganese, phosphorus, copper, and folate. I got that from healthline.com. Yes. Also, it contains protein, fiber, and antioxidants in the bran. But this is not a health project. My friends, Trinidad has given away her food sovereignty. Mindsets must change to get on the road to reclaiming it. Otherwise, we are at the mercy of the countries that feed us. So, with one exception, because my birthday just passed and my husband promised me that he's still going to get me a birthday cake even though he didn't get it on the day as he was working. I will have a couple of slices of my birthday cake, but apart from that, this is what I will not be eating. No flour, no roti, bus up or dalpuri. I'm no bakes, doubles, pies, sahina, cakes, cookies, wafers, biscuits, donuts, buns, rolls, sweetbreads, pasta including macaroni, noodles, or wontons, and no other bread of any kind including burger buns, hot dog rolls, hops, loaf, or sliced bread. Absolutely none. That is no small feat. When I made that list, I realized just how much wheat I eat. Bon Dieu. Nonetheless, 
I'm committed. Today is June 11th, as I said. I'm doing this until July 11th, apart from my couple of slices of birthday cake. Thanks in advance, honey. I will not eat anything made from wheat. Just so that I can prove it can be done, because then if I can do it, that means I can encourage others in Trinidad to do it as well. So subscribe to my channel, click the little bell below to make sure that you're going to get updates just as I post them, because I'm going to post more updates as this month goes on so you can see how things are going with me and the wheat boycott. Also, check out reallynourished.com. That's my blog. I'm going to be writing about this as well. I thank you for participating with me in Really Nourish, making the world a better place one plate at a time.